Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. En the court is back in session. Again, the floor is given to international co-prosecutor to put further questions to the expert. Professor, I'm interested because you talked about uh, interviews you had with Yves Sari in the 1980s, I believe. Did you discuss this topic with him at all, the uh, Democratic Campuchia's attacks in 1980? Did you discuss this topic with him at all, the Democratic Campuchia's attacks in 1980? Uh, no, I don't recall discussing that. Non, je um, ne me souviens pas just en one, avoir um, parlé. Question which stood out to me was Il y a that une question uh, I asked him who were the most influential people in his politically influential people in world history. Parlant dans l'histoire uh, mondiale. The first person he mentioned was Mao Zedong. Qui cité, ça a été Mao Zedong. Uh, I, I will also add that he un point. added. Une chose que lui a ajouté, également Ronald Reagan, de la télévision américaine. Mais non, je ne me souviens pas qu'il ait dit quoi que ce soit là-dessus. Question. Était-ce une interview pour CBS Est-ce qu'elle a été diffusée No, it was never broadcast. No, jamais. You also mentioned that you spoke to the King Father. Vous dites aussi, vous êtes entretenu avec le roi père. Pourriez-vous nous parler de cette conversation avec lui? That was in Bensen. Ça s'est passé à Thailand. Bensen, en Thaïlande, si ma prononciation est correcte. 1985. En 1985. And uh, I mainly engaged uh, the King Father, the late King Father, in discussions of historical questions rather posé than des questions contemporary au roi events. Sur des questions d'histoire um, plutôt que sur des événements contemporains. Towards, uh, Je l'ai fait parler various political figures de ses relations avec différentes figures politiques um, mondiales. And uh, towards the United States. Sa position envers les États-Unis uh, également. And um, that lasted for about 90 minutes. L'interview a duré environ 90 minutes. Did you call if you discussed with him his relationship with the group that he named? Rappelez-vous si vous avez parlé de ses relations avec le groupe qu'il désignait comme étant les Khmer Rouges. No, I don't recall discussing that with him. Non, je ne me souviens pas que nous en ayons parlé. You know, I may, I may have uh, discussed, but nothing that was said was, was oui, exceptional. Mais rien what de ce qui a stays in my mind were things that were exceptional in the conversation. Ce qui so he may have said things, but he may have said things, but he may have said things. He may have said things, but he may have said things. He may have said things, but he may have said things. He may have said things, but he may have said things. He may have said things, but he may have said things. He may have said things, but he may have said things. He may have said things, but he may have said things. He may have said things, but he may have said things. Que vous n'avez pas parlé de la raison pour laquelle, à ce moment, il coopérait avec les vestiges du régime du camp Pucha démocratique pour combattre l'occupation vietnamienne, n'est-ce pas C'est ce que j'en conclus. Réponse. No, I don't recall that part of it. But again, you know, if we did discuss it, the reason I won't recall it is because it would have been obvious. The comments would have been obvious to me. Nothing new. What stands in my mind was what he told me. That was new. New information. 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 He had a tactical alliance with the Khmer Rouge to repel the Vietnamese invasion of the country. Ce point, je savais qu'il avait noué une alliance tactique avec les Khmer Rouges afin de repousser les envahisseurs vietnamiens. And you have described him. Question. Interruption du président. Please, Monsieur le coprocureur. Hold on and please switch off your microphone after you put the question to the expert. Veuillez éteindre votre micro une fois la question posée. Il faut également un bref temps d'arrêt entre les questions et les réponses. Thank you, Mr. President. 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 Thank you, Mr. President
je le ferai. Vous avez décrit le roi père comme étant quelqu'un de pragmatique et de réaliste. Pourriez-vous préciser ce que vous entendez par là Réponse. J'entends par là qu'il avait une série d'objectifs politiques qu'il voulait atteindre le mieux possible, de la façon la plus pragmatique qui soit. Autrement dit, il voulait que le Cambodge reste indépendant et pour ce faire, il a appliqué des politiques qui, d'après lui, devait y parvenir. J'ai soulevé cette question parce que j'ai voulu comparer ça avec les politiques du KD qui, à mon sens, n'étaient pas pragmatiques. Question, pourriez-vous préciser en quoi réside la différence Réponse. En gros, le prince... À l'époque, le prince, donc feu, le roi, à l'époque, avait le titre de prince Sianouk. Le prince, donc, comme je l'ai peut-être déjà dit précédemment, en réponse aux questions de la défense de Nunchia, le prince, donc, comprenait l'hostilité du Vietnam envers les Cambodgiens, ou en tout cas une attitude condescendante, paternaliste de la part des Vietnamiens, également des orientations impériales du Vietnam, mais il pensait devoir tout faire pour empêcher que ces ambitions ne soient réalisées, y compris le fait de ne pas provoquer les Vietnamiens. J'ai établi une comparaison avec le comportement de Pol Pot et des dirigeants du KD, comportement qui lui était provocateur. Question. Vous avez aussi dit que le roi père, le prince Sianouk à l'époque, n'était pas raciste. De quelle façon est-ce que vous compareriez cela avec le Kampuchea démocratique Réponse. Je ne suis pas certain de l'attitude réelle du KD envers les groupes ethniques non khmer. Le Kampuchea démocratique s'inscrivait dans la tradition des mouvements révolutionnaires totalitaires, comme le PCUS, comme le PCC. Leur ambition était d'éradiquer les différences culturelles au sein de la société. Non pas parce qu'ils auraient spécifiquement haï les Vietnamiens ou d'autres groupes ethniques, mais plutôt au motif que la différenciation ethnique constituait un obstacle sur la voie d'une conformité sociale, d'un monolithe social, ce qu'ils voulaient mettre en place. Quelqu'un m'a dit un jour que souvent, peu de temps avec, avant son arrestation, on pouvait souvent voir Yang Sari manger dans un restaurant vietnamien de Phnom Penh, les années qui ont précédé son arrestation. Je soupçonne qu'il n'avait pas d'hostilité particulière pour les Vietnamiens, mais il constituait un obstacle à certaines ambitions. Question. Je passe à un thème quelque peu différent. Je vais vous lire des extraits d'écrits d'autres auteurs sur la vision qu'avaient les Vietnamiens des chefs du KD et des Khmer Rouges. Et... 
I'll start with Dimitri Mosyakov. Commençons par Dimitri Mosyakov. This is at E3 slash 9644. ERN is 010-859974 for the next page in English. Et page suivante. In French, 011-25304. In Khmer, at 011-20075. First of all, you know Mr. Masyakov. Can you explain a little bit about him and your relationship with him? Who he is and in what consists your relationship with this person? Mr. Masyakov was a Russian scholar at the Institute of Oriental Studies in Moscow. When I met him, I met him at Moscow. When I met him, he is an expert in Cambodian affairs. And I hired him. J'ai recouru à ses services en tant qu'assistant dans le cadre de mes recherches. Cela, kind of pour trier les documents en mon nom, comme je l'ai dit, afin uh, de me permettre de décider quels étaient les documents les plus pertinents um, eu égard à mes recherches. Uh, je lui ai laissé pas mal de marge de manœuvre du point de vue temporel, et il a passer une partie du temps à faire ses propres recherches aux archives à l'époque concernant le Cambodge. In the, in the, in, on this page, Question. he indicates that page, Pol Pot introduced Nunchea, a person trusted in Hanoi, whom Lei Duan, leader of the Vietnamese com Hanoi, communists, in a conversation with the Soviet ambassador, called a politician of pro-Vietnam orientation, as the occupant of the second most important post in the party. Speaking of Nunchea, Le Duan literally emphasized, he is our man indeed, and my personal friend, and the footnote indicates that this was a record of the Soviet ambassador with Le Duan dated November 16th, 1976. He goes on to say uh, several pages later, ERN in Kumai 011-200-98-99. In French, 011-25322. And in English, 010-85999. He said in October 1978, according to a high-ranking Vietnamese party official responsible for Cambodia, Hanoi still Hanoi believed that there were two prominent party figures in Phnom Penh who sympathized with Vietnam. Vietnam. Nun Chea and the former Nunchea first secretary of the Eastern Zone, Sao Pim. Friends were aware, a Soviet un diplomat un reported, that Nun Chea opposes Pol Pot's regime. He deeply sympathizes with the CPV, le PCV, but fearing reprisals, he cannot speak his mind. Par crainte de représailles, il ne peut pas dire ce qu'il pense. And then the last from Masyakov on the next page, same ERN in, in uh, French, one more in Khmer, one more in English. He said, Vietnamese hopes that these figures would lead head an uprising against Pol Pot turned out to be groundless. Pol Pot se sont Sao Pim perished in Pim the revolt in June 78, while Moon Chea, as it is known, turned out to be one of the most devoted followers of Pol Pot. It is difficult to understand why, until the end of 1978, it was believed in Hanoi that Moon Chea was their man, in spite of the fact that all previous experience should have proved quite the contrary. Was Hanoi unaware of his permanent siding with Pol Pot? His demands that, quote, the Vietnamese minority should not be allowed to reside in Kampuchea, unquote, his extreme cruelty, Ne soit pas as well à as the fact that in comparison with Nunchea, people considered Pol Pot a paragon of kindness. Pol Pot comme un parangon de gentillesse. Uh, what I'm interested in, uh, sir, 
Professor, is your view of what we can take votre from these point de vue Soviet sur archives ce on peut penser and the Vietnamese sur la base apparent view des at the time concernant that Nunchea ce que à was les sympathetic à to their position in opposition bon oeil leur to Pol Pot, à la différence de Pol Pot, which I can think I can say for all parties present in the courtroom, pour toutes les parties ici présentes, can tell me if I'm wrong, le cas échéant, none of us believe si true, qu'on me le dise, that the Vietnamese had that completely wrong. Le cas, autrement dit, so les what does that say to you about Vietnamiens se sont trompés sur toute la ligne. D'après vous donc, pensez-vous que les Vietnamiens avaient de bons renseignements, qu'ils avaient avaient ils infiltré la direction du PCK, really ce qui leur aurait permis de savoir ce qui se passait réellement au sein du dit parti I think it tells us that the Vietnamese had very poor intelligence about what was going on in the leadership of the DK. De très piètre information sur ce qui se passait à la direction du KD. May have had poor intelligence even more broadly about what was going on in the countryside. Même plus généralement sur ce qui se passait à la campagne. Now, question. The accused persons, Q. Sampan and Nguyen, have said that there were. On dit qu'il y avait des traîtres et des agents vietnamiens, même au sein du comité central et du comité permanent. Qu'est-ce que cela vous dit Pensez-vous pensez que ça ait du sens, compte tenu du fait que le Vietnam considérait que Nguyen Chia était un proche ami well, du Vietnam Réponse, Je pense que ça soulève des questions sur la réalité d'une telle croyance, à savoir qu'il y avait des ennemis à un niveau aussi élevé du PCK. Encore une fois, je reviens à ce que j'ai déjà dit. Cette croyance qu'il y avait des ennemis infiltrés au plus haut échelon du parti, c'était une caractéristique du PCUS, du PCC, du Parti communiste coréen, dans les campagnes de terreur et les purges internes, le dirigeant suprême utilisait toujours ce type de justification. Et peut-être qu'il croyait lui-même, mais ces justifications étaient utilisées à l'appui d'une campagne de terreur au sein de la direction du parti. Question. Bien entendu, au fil du temps, cela a changé en fonction des dirigeants aussi. Peut-être que ça a été différent si l'on compare Staline et les dirigeants ultérieurs. Other periods, the difference between the campaign of Benjia, for example, and the campaign of Deng Xiaoping. Yes, it's the product of a paranoid mindset. It's the product of a paranoid mindset, which is a characteristic of revolutionary elites. Um, it certainly wasn't a characteristic of the mindset of Deng Xiaoping. It was not a characteristic of the mindset of Deng Xiaoping. Thank you. Now, um, you had mentioned that Nun Shea. You had said. Que Nguyen Chia était allé au Vietnam. Il y a différentes citations tirées du livre Behind the Killing Fields. J'aimerais lire les extraits et faire un rapport. En anglais, c'est 0075711. En Khmer, 0085829393. En français, 0089409403. Indicates, quote, that Nguyen Chia was the main Khmer Rouge liaison with the Vietnamese during Cambodia's civil war. Since he had traveled to Vietnam in 1953 for training, he knew the personalities of his Vietnamese counterparts, which made him the ideal negotiator. I am the compromiser, and I was close to Nguyen Van Lin, and we could talk easily. Je suis quelqu'un qui peut faire des compromis. J'étais proche de Nguyen Van Lin. Nous pouvions facilement discuter. A dit Nguyen Chia. Citation suivante. Zhe Yuen, Yuen, en Khmer, 00858279. En français, 00849. Excuse me, eight four nine three nine four. Zero zero eight four. And in English, zero zero seven five seven five zero six. This is in the book they quote Nunchea saying, "I like reading books about how to work in secret." 
des livres and sur le travail books clandestin that ainsi que des livres vietnamiens parlant de la torture et de l'arrestation de membres communistes. So what do you, can you tell us about what Nguyen Chea was doing in Vietnam and his relationship with the Vietnamese? I can't tell you a lot about it. Uh, I can tell you very little. Je ne peux pas vous dire grand chose là-dessus. He would have been one of the leading figures trained by the um, Vietnamese in the early 1950s. Uh, and uh, therefore would have had a certain therefore would have had a certain relationship uh, with them, a certain type of relationship with favorable them from their point of view, favorable de leur point because the Vietnamese always believed that the people they trained would remain loyal to them. This, was, this is turned out to be false, Là, uh, révélé faux. as in the case of, for example, Comme dans le cas, par exemple de Ben One Sovan. obvious example. Un exemple um, évident. But uh, I think that Nguyen Chia, because of his Nunchia, pedigree, uh, de par son in the Indochinese communist movement, dans le mouvement communiste uh, indochinois, a dû by the être traité favorablement the par les Vietnamiens, raison uh, pour laquelle ils ont mal Vietnam. interprété son attitude envers le Vietnam. What can you tell us about the relationship que pouvez-vous nous dire this des relations entre ce mouvement que Sihanouk appelait Rouge, le Parti communiste, même si on n'employait pas ce nom à l'époque, mais à compter de 1968, comme vous le savez, il y a eu une rébellion armée contre le gouvernement de Sihanouk. Le gouvernement avait été élu contre le gouvernement élu et contre la monarchie. Donc, entre 68 et le coup d'État de 70, quelles ont été les relations entre les Khmer Rouge et les Vietnamiens The, uh, the, the, the uh, Khmer Rouge and Vietnamese had different les objectives between 1968 and 1970 because, des objectifs uh, différents. the Khmer Rouge, en as effet, you've stated correctly, dit, wanted to les Khmer overthrow Rouge the voulaient government renverser le gouvernement of then Prince Sihanouk, de celui qui était à l'époque le prince Vietnamese Sihanouk, wanted to tandis que les Vietnamiens voulaient le maintenir au pouvoir parce qu'il leur permettait d'utiliser le Cambodge and as a supply base comme base d'approvisionnement vers par Sihanoukville pour la guerre au Vietnam Sud, donc une base d'opération. Donc les communistes vietnamiens voulaient maintenir en place le gouvernement Sihanouk. Il y a donc eu un conflit d'intérêts entre les Khmer Rouge basés dans le nord-est du Cambodge, des provinces reculées du nord-est, et les Vietnamiens. A little dans l'est du Cambodge, parfois un peu plus au sud. Pour les années entre 1968 et 1972, donc deux ans avant et deux ans après le coup d'État, pendant cette période, est-ce que les Khmer Rouges ont sollicité l'assistance des Vietnamiens et en ont-ils reçu Uh, well, they would have uh, been supported by Ils ont dû uh, être soutenus the Vietnamese par at that time, les Vietnamiens, especially from 1970 to 1972, after the coup d'état de mars 1970, de mars Lon Nol and Siric Matak. Les Vietnamiens, the Vietnamese communists who had been told by Lon Nol to get out of Cambodia, avait dit de launched le Cambodge, a series of offensives in late March of 1970 against the Lon Nol government. Le gouvernement Lon -Nol. And, th and then subsequently expanded Ensuite, the war into ils ont Cambodia la guerre en territoire cambodgien de façon plus générale. As I said before, the Vietnamese were previously mostly in the eastern provinces of dans les provinces orientales du Cambodge. After the American in, and South Vietnamese invasion Après in April 1970, they fled into the interior of Cambodia. And in their wake, they Et set up 
dans leur siège, ils ont créé des structures communistes cambodgiennes qu'ils ont essayé de dominer en utilisant leurs agents Khmer qu'ils avaient formés eux-mêmes, à savoir les Khmer vietnamiens, des gens ramenés de Hanoï. Mais Pol Pot et les autres chefs Khmer rouges étaient conscients d'une telle stratégie vietnamienne et ils ont révoqué les Khmer Vietnamiens Viet Viet de l'appareil de direction des Khmer Rouges. Autrement dit, entre 1970 et 1972, les communistes vietnamiens ont aidé les Khmer Rouges à s'enraciner en fournissant pas mal d'aide militaire contre leur question. The, uh, of April. Après le coup d'État et jusqu'au 17 avril, où les Khmer Rouges se sont-ils procurés leurs armes et leurs munitions uh, they obtained their arms and ammunition mostly Leurs from armes China, et munitions, ils les ont obtenues surtout auprès de la uh, Chine. Some of it would have come down the Ho Chi Minh Une partie passait par la piste Ho Chi Minh. Et techniquement, cela a été remis par les Vietnamiens, mais c'était des armes chinoises. Merci. Je passe à présent à un autre thème et parlons évoquons les affirmations du KD concernant des agents vietnamiens au sein des rangs and, uh, the reasons for arrests and executions. et également les raisons des arrestations et Michael exécutions. Vickery is a, Michael Vickery uh, academic. Do you know him? est un universitaire. Le connaissez-vous Réponse oui. It's frequently cited by the defense in this case. Il est souvent cité par la he défense dans cette affaire. Le document E3-57 et le ERN est seulement en anglais 0039 Parmi la direction du KD, Yang Sari et Salotsar en particulier n'ont jamais été pro-vietnamiens et ils sont de plus en plus anti-vietnamiens au fil du temps. Tandis que ceux qui étaient peu ou peu pro-vietnamiens ont été éliminés sans merci entre 1975 et 1979. Vous-même, dans votre livre, à la page 106, c'est en anglais 0100 17773. Vous avez écrit ceci. There is no evidence that the people whom Pol Pot's emissaries attempted to kill were agents of Vietnam. On the contrary, the people Pol Pot was now attempting to kill had loyally carried out orders from the Khmer Rouge leadership for the previous three years. These orders had involved them attacking Vietnamese and ethnic Cambodian civilian targets inside Vietnam. And bearing the brunt of Vietnamese au Vietnam, retaliation. et ils avaient aussi été les premières victimes des représailles vietnamiennes. Um, des civils vietnamiens et des civils de souche cambodgienne au Vietnam, précise l'interprète. Je vais Elizabeth faire Becker, toutes les citations d'abord et puis poser une question. Book, Elisabeth E3 Becker, E3 E3 20, ERN, ERN, English 00237. 970 In the midst of this chaos, the Eastern Zone Army was ordered to the border to push back encroaching Vietnamese troops after several skirmishes. 
The center rebuked Sao Pim, the Eastern Zone leader, for fighting the Vietnamese too zealously and warned him not to upset the tenuous balance on the border. She goes on to say on another page, and that is English 00 238002, Khmer 00. 232-392 in French 00 She said referring to Sao Pim, he was too much a part of the system to imagine it turning against him or to recognize the clues when the center did turn on him. He was a party elder he had been a member of the elite standing committee since the 1950s. He had been party secretary of the Eastern Zone since 1960. He had personally built up the Eastern Zone Army. And on the next page, he says, yet when Pol Pot ordered the execution of the Khmer communists, who returned from Hanoi with the Vietnamese troops, Pim obeyed. Eastern zone deputies like Uk Pung Chung oversaw the detention and execution of the returnees within the regime region in 1974. But nowhere in this record is there a hint of Sao Pim being a close friend of Vietnam. Rather, he was proud of his record of refusing to become dependent on Vietnam in war or peace. Nor was there a hint of rebellion. So, I'd like you to comment on what these other writers have written, and, and also you, I didn't read all of the uh, excerpts in your book. Was there a rational belief by the DK leaders that their ranks were riven with traitors and agents of Vietnam? In the in the period of the war uh, against the Lon Nol government, I think it was true that there were agents of Vietnam within the Kampuchean Communist Party and that Pol Pot was correct in thinking so. Uh, not all the Khmer Viet Minh, as I've, I want to reiterate, not all of the people trained in Hanoi were loyal to Hanoi, it turned out to be loyal to Hanoi, but there were a substantial number who were and who could have been considered to be compliant with uh, Hanoi's interests in Indochina. However, most of these people had been killed by 1975. And therefore, the purges and terror campaign, or campaigns which took place after 1975, were aimed at people who were loyal members of the system. I, I believe that it was a paranoid fantasy on the part of Pol Pot to think that people within the party who had been loyal to the party throughout a long period of time were in fact agents of Vietnam. Instead, I, I, I think it was not, not only paranoia, but uh, also an attempt to explain weakness in conflict with Vietnam. In other words, the people like in the Eastern Zone who took the brunt of the fighting of Vietnam and who were not successful in their fighting with Vietnam must have been traitorous in order not to defeat Vietnam. Again, this is a part of a paranoid political culture which permeates all revolutionary movements. Are there other examples of such regimes where they blame their own failures on sabotage, traitors within the ranks? Ils ont reproché des échecs aux traîtres et aux actes de sabotage dans les rangs. Certainly, Stalin's regime did that and so did Mao's regime. Réponse oui, le régime de Staline l'a fait et également le régime de Mao. I'd like to uh, read to you something that is written by Chanda, where he's quoting Stephen Hedder. 
And this is E3 slash 2376. In English, it's 00192380. In Khmer, 00191527. And in French, 00237063324. He said, in light of what happened since the massacres in Tainin, it has also become clear that it was no isolated act of madness. The attack on the eve of Pol Pot's first official trip to China was clearly aimed at impressing on China the seriousness of Cambodia's determination to fight Vietnam. American scholar Stephen Hedder believes that the September 24th attack on Tainin, launched by Divisions 3 and 4 of Cambodia's eastern zone, was a double gift. At a time when a countrywide hunt for suspected Vietnamese sympathizers was on, the eastern zone leader's zeal in killing Vietnamese was proof of loyalty to Pol Pot as well as an offering for him to carry to Beijing. Do you think uh, that there is some um, logic in Hedder's belief that the Eastern Zone's participation in these killing of Vietnamese civilians was partially aimed to prove their loyalty to Pol Pot? Yes, I agree. Let me talk a little bit, ask you a little bit about the relationship between democratic Kampuchea and the Soviet Union, and then between, uh, uh, then we'll go into China and the Soviet Union. Do you know what happened on the 17th of April when the Khmer Rouge took Phnom Penh to the Soviet embassy? Yes, I believe that the Khmer Rouge fired a missile into the Soviet embassy. Can you explain why the, what the relations were and why the state of relations was as they were? Uh, the relations were poor. Uh, because the Soviet Union had not broken relationship with the Lon Nol government. That's the first reason. Uh, and I think the second reason is that the Khmer Rouge, regard, being Maoist in their orientation, were regarded the Soviet Union as a revisionist power. Uh, that's, a, that's a bad word in Marx, amongst Marxist-Leninist purists to call somebody a revisionist. It means you're abandoning some of the fundamental principles of Marxism-Leninism, and I believe that uh, that's how they regarded the Soviet Union. So there was a double uh, a set of factors, two, two, set, two factors which would have compelled the, uh, them to be hostile towards the Soviet Union. And what about the relationship in this time period between China and the Soviet Union. Can you talk about that? And the, the period I'm talking about is um, the DK period from 1975 to 79, but you can explain earlier events that affected that relationship. Yes, um, Relationships between the Soviet Union and China were extremely bad. Uh, they had hit rock bottom in 1969 when the Soviets actually threatened to take uh, action, launch an attack against uh, Chinese military installations, uh, which they did not do, um, in part because of a warning from the United States not to do it. Uh, but uh, the, the relationships continued to sour uh, throughout the 1970s. 
and uh, the Chinese regarded the Soviet Union as an expansionist power, which was at, uh, intending to surround China strategically, and that Vietnam was one of the um, instruments of uh, Soviet uh, policy, uh, Cuba being the other one. Uh, from 1975 to 1978, I think that um, uh, Soviet-Chinese relationship Les continued to get worse, uh, and uh, I think that um, the Khmer Rouge was still sym sympathetic to China in a, in a total and overall sense until 1976 when Mao died. I think that their fervor for China as a nation diminished after the death of Mao. And the most loyal friend, the only country which the Khmer Rouge considered to be a good friend uh, after 1976 was North Korea. And do you put the change in the DK view towards China at the death of Mao or the um, subsequent fall of the Gang of Four to Deng Xiaoping's eventual emergence? I think that was about a year later, was it? à savoir une année après l'émergence de Deng Xiaoping. Yes, I think, uh, well, I, I, I'd restate it then. Um, the, the Khmer Rouge became somewhat disillusioned with China as a result of the death of Maoism, which involved the Gang of Four. And did, in fact, China and the Soviet Union actually have armed clashes over a dispute about where their border was? Yes, they did. So for China, uh, how did they view the Vietnam's relationship with the Soviet Union? Du Vietnam avec l'Union soviétique. China's, uh, China viewed uh, Vietnam's relationship with the Soviet Union as a sign of ingratitude towards Chinese assistance over the whole history of uh, the Vietnamese Communist Movement. Chinese uh, support for Vietnam over the entire history of the Vietnamese Communist Movement. Uh, uh, the, that was the first thing, and the second thing was uh, that they regarded uh, the Soviet Union as using Vietnam against China. Did Vietnam and China have territorial disputes? Yes, they did. Uh, even during the period of before the fall of South Vietnam, there were disputes over the Paracel and Spratly Islands, disputes which continue to this day. And can you briefly uh, put on the record your view of the difference in the power, the military power, of the question. Soviet Union and China at that time in the late 1970s. Époque, enfin, à la fin des années 70. Uh, although China had nuclear weapons, uh, pense, the China Soviet China Union was a vastly superior military power, a global China superpower. Uh, uh, China was a regional power. La... L'Union soviétique était so bien view, plus puissante. La Chine était une puissance régionale. Would, uh, Chinese, Question. Um, fear of encirclement by the Soviet Union, Soviet bases in Vietnam, soviétique. be uh, a rational Et view. de ces bases. Est-elle irrationnelle? Serait-elle irrationnelle? Yes, it was a, ra a, a rational fear. And how then did the Chinese Réponse view oui. Cambodia as uh, how it played out in this, these various relationships between Vietnam, China, Soviet Union? Entre le rôle du Cambodge dans ces événements impliquant la Chine 
le Vietnam, l'Union soviétique. China regarded Cambodia as a possible buffer against Vietnamese expansion. Considérait le Cambodge comme une zone tampon. And uh, it should be noted that China has always had a special relationship with Cambodia, uh, going back to uh, the late King Father's rule when he was uh, both king and then uh, Prince Sihanouk. D'abord roi, puis prince Sianouk. I want to ask you about something you wrote on page 72 of your book. The ERN is 01001739. You wrote, note, Paul Pot's political judgment that building socialism quickly, which had already involved massacring hundreds of thousands of people, destroying their traditional culture and institutions, and creating second-class citizens out of the new people, would make Cambodia internally stronger and better able with its, to deal with its external enemies. This judgment suggests a total disconnection from reality, which is clearly the product of paranoia and misguided ideological assumptions. You wrote on page 237, ERN is 0100-1910. Paul Pot's power within his party was never seriously challenged after 1972. And by 1977, his preemptive purges of the party and military had eliminated any possibility of a coup. Paul Pot's purges against non-existent enemies during 1978 further weakened his already weak political and military position in relation to his foreign enemies. Sa position militaire et politique déjà faible par rapport à ses ennemis étrangers. Can you talk about that? Did the DK policies, particularly these internal purges, purges of the East Zone Army and other setting up detention centers around the country, other Khmer, uh, DK policies, did they, in your view, Help to assure the independence of Cambodia? Or did they make it more likely that Cambodia would lose its independence and actually weaken the country towards any potential foreign invader? La perte de l'indépendance du pays et favoriser une éventuelle invasion extérieure. Uh, I believe the latter interpretation is correct. It severely weakened Cambodia's ability to engage in conflict with any neighbor, and, um, with the possible exception of Laos, with, with which uh, Cambodia was not in conflict. Um, I would, I would like to point out, again, to use historical analogies, that this is a replication of kinds of behavior we see from revolutionary totalitarian dictators in the past, Stalin's, in the, in the, in the, in the wake of a, the rise of Nazi Germany, Stalin purged not only his party leadership, but also his military and severely weakened the capability of the Soviet Union to face Nazi Germany. Similarly, there were pur in China, there were purges of the Chinese military at a time when China regarded the Soviet Union as a mortal threat to China. Mao Zedong carried out these terrorist purges against the armed forces' leadership uh, in a way which diminished his capability to deal with it any possible future confrontation with the Soviet Union. So Pol Pot was in a way behaving just like the two giants of international communism uh, in carrying out an internal purge against people whom he needed 
and in, and in, in fact in the general policy that he was pursuing, uh, weakening the country's ability to resist et, uh, Vietnam, if that's what he really thought was the pays. main threat to Cambodia. Uh, Well, in your view, were his policies aimed at strengthening the country against Vietnam or maintaining a small clique, his clique of leaders in power? Maintenir une petite clique de dirigeants au pouvoir ou plutôt à assurer la sécurité du pays contre le Vietnam? I, I believe the latter. Um, Although he wanted to Je resist what he saw as the Vietnamese threat, um, même si he, he, what he was doing at the same time undermined his capabilities. Mais, uh, ses agissements, les mesures qu'il a prises, You've mentioned, I believe, this morning, or perhaps it was yesterday afternoon, Question. some historical matin, attitudes of Khmer people Khmer towards Vietnam country that has a uh, much larger and that over the centuries has taken territory from what was previously part of the Khmer Empire. Um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about fur further about that in particular. How did, in the, during the Vietnam War, at the time of the 1970 coup and before and after that, how were the Vietnamese welcomed or not welcomed by Vietnamien the Khmer people inside Cambodia, the Vietnamese that were using bases in Cambodia. Around, yes, in, in the years before 1970. Avant et après 1970. Uh, the Vietnamese presence in Cambodia was not popular. It was not popular during the time of Sihanouk, which is one of the reasons why Sihanouk went overseas in early 1970 to try and convince the Soviets and the Chinese to get the Vietnamese out of Cambodia, the Vietnamese troops which were occupying the eastern zone of Cambodia. That was his mission when he was overthrown. Um, uh, most Cambodian people uh, are hostile towards the Vietnamese and uh, would not have uh, embraced any Vietnamese military presence in the country. And would you say they would not have embraced then uh, a Vietnamese invasion and capture of their capital before the Khmer Rouge? Um, the Khmer Rouge yes, I think that's correct. And do you think that the Khmer Rouge, the DK policies, affected how the uh, what resistance there was to the eventual Vietnamese invasion? How it changed people's lives? Comment est-ce que cela a changé la vie de la population? Yes, I, I, I think it uh, affected the, the way they reacted. I think that um, the Cambodian people didn't want either a Vietnamese occupation of Cambodia nor a Khmer Rouge control of Cambodia, which is why uh, in the elections which were held in 1993, a majority of Cambodians voted for the non-communist forces of the late Father King and of uh, the Republican Party of uh, the late Mr. Son San. The majority of people reject communism and they reject uh, Vietnamese control of the country. However, in the 70 to 75 war, there was, we can talk about it, a certain amount of popular support or support for the front, the opposition to Lon Nol, headed um, theoretically by Sihanouk. To what extent did Sihanouk's presence in that government affect the popular, the ability of the Khmer Rouge to gain popular support. Well, 
I think that uh, Sihanouk's role, then Prince Sihanouk's role, was vital in helping the Khmer Rouge gain popular support. Um, it should be noted, however, that there were royalist forces fighting against Lon Nol. There was a royalist army, um, though dwarfed by the, t the rival communist factions. Uh, but I think that um, uh, it was his political legitimacy um, which helped uh, the Khmer Rouge soften some of the opposition to the Khmer Rouge, uh, which would otherwise have uh, existed. Uh, there is a, something on that point um, that I wanted to bring up, but I can't find it now, but perhaps you recollect it. Maybe it was from your book. Do you recall in your conver uh, any conversation with Sihanouk or reading about Sihanouk talking about badges with his picture being produced? Yes, it was in my book. Uh, uh, there were badges produced uh, at the behest uh, of the, I can't remember whether it was the Chinese or the North Vietnamese, badges of Sihanouk which were to be used uh, and uh, in order to, uh, to, to uh, win popular support um, during the war. This was at a time in which the Vietnamese were still present in Cambodia during the 1970 to 75 war. And um, it was the Pol Pot group uh, which took the badges and threw them away because they didn't want too much credit for their successes to be attributed to uh, Sihanouk. I have time for just one last question today. So I would like you to comment upon uh, something you wrote in your book. This is at ERN 1774. You quote the Vietnamese leader, Le Duan, as having called the existing system in Cambodia at that time, the DK, quote, slaveholding communism, unquote. Can you tell us uh, what he meant by that? Entre guillemets, pouvez-vous nous dire ce qu'il entend par là, d'après votre interprétation? Well, that uh, I think what he understood was réponse, that uh, the system of uh, party control of society was so onerous, uh, with people not paid for their work except in food uh, and uh, an, an insufficient amount of food that um, it was a form of slavery uh, rather than uh, the kind of uh, communism that existed in uh, Vietnam. Um, uh, some of these issues are matters of degree, of course, but um, the, the situation in Cambodia was very extreme, of course, in 75 to 78. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, well, President, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Expert. It is now a convenient time for the adjournment. The chamber will resume its hearing tomorrow, 20 October 2016, at, eight, at 9 a.m. Tomorrow, the chamber continue to hear the testimony of Mr. Expert Stephen Morris. Thank you, Mr. Stephen, Stephen Morris. Morris. The hearing of your testimony Merci, as Monsieur an expert has not yet concluded. Votre you are therefore invited to come back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Court officer, in collaboration with Visu, please make necessary transport arrangements to send the expert Morris to where he is staying and invite him back to the courtroom tomorrow at 9 a.m. Security personnel are instructed to bring Kyo Sampon and Nguyen back to the detention facility 
and have them return the, to the courtroom to tomorrow morning before 9 a.m. The court is now adjourned. Don't